We are continuing to follow breaking news out of our nation's capital for you this morning. Lawmakers are back at work after several tense hours. A mob supporting President Trump storming the U.S. Capitol yesterday, clashing with police and disrupting the constitutional process to confirm President-elect Joe Biden's win. Protesters breaching security and making their way inside the Senate chamber. Capitol police shooting and killing a woman inside the U.S. Capitol. Three others died from medical emergencies. Tracy Potts joining me live now from D.C. Good morning to you, Tracy. Another dark day in our nation's history. Many are calling the siege on the U.S. Capitol a first of its kind since the War of 1812. A lot of criticism over why law enforcement appeared unprepared to handle these rioters. Any word yet on what's being done to make sure this doesn't happen again? Good question, especially the fact that we have uh, inauguration coming up in just a couple of weeks. Already security preparations and COVID preparations were being made for that. But what might that now look like given what we know is the capability uh, for significant violence and breach of security uh, here in the Capitol complex. The police gave the all clear early this morning of not only the Capitol building, uh, but the whole complex, the building surrounding it. Uh, but we are still under a state of emergency between now and the inauguration. We woke up mm -hmm. to a curfew waiting to see if, in fact, uh, that will be replicated today and questions about not only uh, the riots but the process. We do know that lawmakers came back with a, a renewed resolve. They got the work done. They uh, finished the count and declared Joe Biden the winner early this morning. Uh, but now what will the work look like moving forward uh, as they begin to ask these questions and investigate security, not only the preparations but what happened once people got inside the building. Uh, not only were there the deaths that you mentioned, yeah. the security breach, but explosive devices were found in and around uh, the Capitol. So there are a lot of questions to be explored here. A noose as well. There have been some confusion, Tracy, over who specifically called in the National Guard and when. Was it the vice president? Was it the president? What are you hearing on that end? Yeah, our information is that the vice president, and in, in, in a statement, his office said uh, he was in regular contact with, uh, interestingly, they did not mention the president, but the Pentagon, uh, in terms of the National Guard, people, leaders on Capitol Hill, and our understanding is that it was Vice President Pence, who at that point had been whisked away to a, a secure location in hiding, who ordered the National Guard to the Capitol. House Judiciary Democrats uh, asking Vice President Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment. How likely is this to happen? So a couple of things about that 25th Amendment that would allow uh, the cabinet, a majority of the cabinet with the vice president to remove the president from office if he's found unable to perform his duties. Number one, do they have enough time? Number two, are there enough people on the cabinet who would support that? Number three, would the vice president do it? He's certainly been in a difficult situation over the last 24, 48 hours um, trying to stay loyal, as he said, to President Trump, but presiding over a process where he actually uh, ended up having to be the one to say um, Joe Biden won this election and it's official and it's counted and it's done. All right, just one thing among many to keep an eye out for on Capitol Hill today. Tracy Potts, thank you so much for your time. We'll be right back with more Morning Rush at 6.54.